It is March 5th, 1770. The king is infuriated with the American colonists because of the acts of the Sons of Liberty. After they dumped valuable tea into the ocean during the Boston Tea Party, the king enforced harsh punishments on the American colonists and sent over 700 British troops to the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Tensions are rising in the streets of Boston between the colonists and the British soldiers. It's clear something big and bad is coming. Christmas Addicts has just landed in Boston after sailing from the stormy Atlantic coast on a whaling ship. He's in search of finding his love, Marion. Christmas and Marion were slaves in William Brown's house in the Massachusetts Bay Colony. Christmas escaped the farm and became a sailor to earn enough money to buy Marion's freedom, but she got sold at an auction before he could say goodbye. I was a slave for as long as I can remember. I worked away for half my years from when I was born until when I was 27, picking away a crop to do other farming work. The only thing that made me happy was seeing Marion smile. I've been separated from her. I have worked hard for respect my whole life, but many people don't seem to care about anything I say because of the color of my skin. Why do I see so many British ships docking? Why are there so many red coats armed and ready? Mary, there she is. But who are those folks in the answer? She sees me. Give me a big hug, I say. It's so great to see you. What's your name, young sir? John. And you, kind sir? James. Well, it's great to meet you. My owner treats me like a speck of dust. He whips me whenever I try and talk. I only have five minutes of free time. Aren't black people just treated horribly? While Christmas looks for Miriam, things are getting more tense between the colonists and the British soldiers. A big argument is happening between a wig maker and a soldier in the streets of Boston. The soldier shouts for backup. Christmas and Marion ran toward all the commotion. The soldiers raised their muskets. There's so much tension in the air. So many people are screaming and shouting. Young soldier, your king is making us pay unfair taxes. We did not have a chance to vote on having these taxes put upon us. You owe me money for that wig I made you. Come back here. <laughs> I work for a man named Sam Adams. He is very good to me. My life is great and I have made many friends and get phone views. Mr. Adams doesn't believe in slavery and so he made me free. My money has been very slow, but I managed to run a bakery just down the road. We can go there for a meal later. Hey, those soldiers are mistreating that wig maker and his friends. Give me that stick. I'm going to go defend them. Please, it's okay. Don't move. Stay calm. As I walk toward the wig maker, I'm a little frightened by the soldiers' great big guns. Maybe I shouldn't be doing it. No, I shall risk my life to protect the others around me. More people come and help the soldiers who are gathering around. Something bad is going to happen. I can feel it. The soldier walks up to us. He is very scary looking, and before he can run, he hits the wig maker with a musket. Many people are scared. Some flee and some stay. I'm very scared right now, but I really want to see what happens. Some soldiers are running into their houses to get knives and guns. Marianne, get out of here, I say. Women are screaming. Men are picking up their wives and running. This is a big massacre. Boom. It feels like something small and round fit through my chest. Why did I get shot? Maybe it was just destiny. But when I had my last second in this room, at least I just got to see Marianne's face on the last time. Christmas Addicts was the first of five people shot and killed in the streets of Boston that day. Addicts is the only one who became widely known. He became the first hero of the American Revolution. This event was one of the causes leading up to the American Revolution. We thought it was important to show the events of the Boston Massacre through Christmas Addicts' eyes because it shows that black people were not treated equally because of slavery during that time. We're not so sure if it was a coincidence that the first person killed in the Boston Massacre was black, or if the British soldier had bad poor aim. Perhaps we will never know if a multiracial man was purposely shot that day 
and it's worth questioning history and what he would have been taught about this day in American history.